Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great day today. Uh, it's Thursday and uh, we're headed towards another weekend. I've kind of been, been working on my sermon for Sunday and trying to think about Elijah and all he accomplished. And uh, we're going to see what happens uh, as he heads into the ravine away from uh, where you might expect him to go after pronouncing that there were, you know, first coming before Ahab and saying, you know, there'll be no more rain. Uh, you might expect him to stay there, but he doesn't. He moves on and goes into the ravine. But we'll we'll talk about that on su Saturday and Sunday. But today we're uh, in this devotional called Win the Day. Uh, Mark Batterson, it's a new book that he's written. He's written several books on prayer, and we've gone through some of those. And uh, the Circle, uh, Circle Maker, I think it's called. Uh, and some others that uh, he has done that have been so, so good. Uh, he's a pastor in Washington, D.C., uh, not too far away from the Capitol. Uh, kind of an interesting uh, place to be, I'm sure, a place to serve in these days. But uh, but anyway, this book's called Win the Day. And mainly looking, you can't really look back because, uh, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff back there. We, we you know, we want to leave a lot of that behind. We, you know, we do want to learn from our mistakes, but we, we leave it there. We move forward. And we can't look too far ahead because if we do that, I mean, you know, that's one thing COVID has taught us. We never know what's around the corner. And so we we just have today. And so we trust today. We live in today. We make today worth all that it is, you know, all that it can be uh, with the Lord's help. And and so that's kind of the goal of, of this devotional is to help us to be very mindful of, of what is going on today, right now in our lives and making the most of today. Uh, this is habit number three. It's called Eat the Frog. Another interesting uh, title for a devotional uh, today, but uh, uh, you'll, I think it's an, a, a good idea, a good, an interesting idea, and it talks, it's talking about how you begin your day. But here's how it begins. According to Mark Twain, if you ever have to eat a live frog, it's best done first thing in the morning. I know this scenario is awfully unlikely, but it's good advice nonetheless. Why eat the live frog first thing in the morning? You ask, because you can go through the rest of your day knowing the hardest task is behind you. Uh, like I said, I think that's, it's kind of humorous, but it's uh, it's also, that's an interesting idea. Uh, if you get the worst thing out of the way, uh, then maybe maybe the rest of the day will be all right. And, and um, you know, I think maybe maybe after this first uh, week or so of our new year, maybe we can we get the worst out of the way and then we'll, we'll move on to, to better things in the coming year. We'll hope for, hope for that for sure. This is what what to do list items are you most tempted to procrastinate on? What goals have you had forever but not taken the first step toward? What difficult decisions have you been delaying? That, my friend, is your frog. Give yourself a deadline, then get started. That is the third habit, and it's a hard one to swallow. <laughs> he says, "Sorry, I couldn't resist." Uh, you know, and we do that a lot, don't we? Uncomfortable things, hard things, we we sort of put them off and. We don't deal with them up front and as soon as we can. And just the idea here being get deal with the, the hardest things first and then then you can go on and, and win the rest of the day, uh, even if those things are, are hard. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard for us to do, but it is possible and it is best for us. The bottom line, you can't you can't just pray like it depends on God. You also have to work like it depends on you. Kind of the, the finding that balance there. You you pray, you know, for the Lord's help, the Lord's strength for him to help you, and you trust him and you put it in the Lord's hands and you do all of those things. But you also work like it depends on you. You do your part. You do what God wants you to do. Uh, you take the hard steps, do the hard things. This is if you want God to do the super, you've got to do the natural. You know, we talk about that, you know, we, we ask God to do supernatural things for us. And, and that's that's true. That's great. That's important. But but there is a sense where we need to do the natural things, the, the ordinary things that, that get us to a place where God blesses and uses us. And it says you, you have to start first thing in the morning, doing the natural things, the things that you have to do. Do those first, get them out of the way, and then you can uh, can move on to other things. This is how you start the day it sets the tone for the rest of it. Yet many of us never give the morning a second thought beyond getting out of the out the door on time. Our morning rituals are as unplanned as an earthquake. Is that the best way to start the day? That's sounding the retreat before the day even begins. 
if we're intentional and and one thing i've i've started doing uh, i've done it in different ways through the years but but being just really intentional the first thing i do in the each morning is when i pick up my phone i go to my U version bible app and, and read my scripture of the day and maybe do a devotional spend some time in god's word and and that's my first thing i do uh, before i do anything else that's that's number one before even checking my emails and different things like that i i will go to god's word first and and that's how you and that's not a hard thing that's not eating the frog first but it is making a, a good preparation for the rest of the day uh, as the the rest of the day unfolds differently than when i focus on god's word first so jesus made the most of the early part of the day mark one gives us one example it says very, very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. On another occasion, before appointing his disciples in the morning, he prayed all night. Uh, good things, good words of preparation. And we'll read those stories here in a minute uh, in Scripture. What's the one thing you, you least like to do but you feel best about afterwards? That's your frog. It's often the hardest habit to establish, but it pays the biggest dividends. Whatever it is, you've got to figure out a morning routine that works for you. And I might add that one that works for your spouse and your kids and your dog and your boss. <laughs> All those things. We need to be intentional. We need to be doing those hard things first. Or not necessarily even hard things. Like I said, the things that we need to do to get our day off on the right foot. Because I don't want to call reading my scripture the hardest thing I do all day but but for sure it's you know it's a good discipline that that I, I need to, that gets my day started on the right foot if you want to win the day he says you've got to attack the day uh, I would say have purpose have meaning to it give meaning to it do the most important things first and then it's okay then you can handle the rest of the stuff so he says it's time to eat the frog <laughs> I don't I, I'm not encouraging you to go out and find a frog and eat it uh, <laughs> but you get the idea. And that it has this little think on this. It says, if you want God to do the super, you've got to do the natural. Think about that today. Think think about that as you go through your day. Yes, we want God to do the supernatural, but but what is it, what are the natural things you need to do to to maybe you know find the supernatural or find ways that you serve Him, serve the Lord, and follow the Lord. Uh, here's the first verse of scripture the, the devotional gives us, Psalm 35. So I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. And, and, and that's it. I just, just, I love that verse. And it, 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 it reminds us what's important, you know, and who's in charge. Uh, you know, I lie down and sleep and I trust the Lord. When I wake up again, it's the Lord that wakes me up every day. He wakes up each of us every day, and we just trust him, and he's the one that does the hard work. Uh, our, our duty is to follow him and be his, uh, be his person. The next passage is Psalm 57, 7 to 8. My heart, O God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake, my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. Uh, how do you begin your day? Do you roll out of bed and grunt and groan a little bit? And, and I admit I do that sometimes. But, but how do you awaken the day? How is your soul awakened? Well, I just encourage you to start with God's Word. Start with Him and, and He'll help you get going and get your day started on the right track. Next passage is Psalm 143, verses 7 to 8. It says this, Answer me quickly, Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I will be like those who go down to the pit. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, to, for to you I entrust my life. Uh, there's no better way to live life than that. Psalm 143, verses 7 and 8. Uh, I, I love that. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. Uh, begin your day with the Lord every single day. Put your trust, your hope in Him. Go to Him first, and He'll make everything else uh, be okay. You, you know, <laughs> just that's the best way to live. Another verse, Proverbs six nine to eleven. This this one has several verses, and I, I mean, not the, this uh, devotional has several passages that we look at, but this one says, "How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep?" A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief, and the scarcity 
in scarcity like an armed man. In other words, get going, get your day going, spend it with the Lord, get it going in the right direction, uh, or else you, you may be like a sluggard. Uh, one of the most fun words in the Bible. Uh, you know, when will you get up from your sleep? Wake up, get up with the Lord, begin your day with Him. The next one is Proverbs 31, 15. She gets, gets up while it's still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. Talking about the Proverbs 31 woman, as he describes a, a, a woman and, and you, just the industriousness, I guess you might say. Uh, but but just the way in which, you know, you get up a little earlier so you can spend time with the Lord. Maybe that's what you have to do. If you have trouble and you're just trying to make it out the door in the morning, spend that extra time with the Lord. Get up 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, hour earlier, however long you need to get your day set off on the right step. And it'll change everything about your day, how you face face the day. Well, then we come back around to, to the New Testament, Mark 1.35. It's a very, very early in the morning while it was still dark. Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Uh, it's Jesus showing us the way we should go, how we should live, uh, making sure we start our day uh, with the Lord, start our day in prayer. The next one's Luke 6, 12 to 16. Uh, one of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. Simon, whom he, called, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who is called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Uh, Jesus, in preparation for, for the big moment of, of selecting the 12, he spent that time in prayer ahead of it. And, and we can face our days like that too. Spend time in prayer as we head into the day and uh, just make everything go so much better. Uh, we'll be in line with, with God's plan for us, in line for his work for the day. Well, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this. Help us to... Uh, Spend our day, our early part of our day, getting it going with you. Help us to develop that, that discipline uh, because it will grow, grow us closer to you, first of all, but it will also help us as we face the rest of our day. We will do it in your will uh, and in your way. And so, Lord, just help us as we seek to do this. And uh, like I said, maybe it might mean going to sleep a little earlier so we can get up a little earlier or, or we get up a little earlier and, and, and just uh, spend that time with you. Lord, just lead us and guide us in this and, and help us to live uh, in this way. We, we, it's what's best for us. Lord, we uh, do continue to lift up those with COVID. We pray that you would help them, that you would touch them, that you would uh, bring healing to them. Use doctors and nurses if necessary. Uh, Lord, again, I, I lift up uh, my pastor friend, Chet Martin. Lord, we just pray your blessing on him. Not hurt anything the last day or so, but we... We just pray that you would touch him and bring healing to him. But be with all those that are, are suffering from this awful sickness. We just ask your blessing on them. Uh, be with doctors and nurses and first responders, Lord, all those caring for those that have the sickness, Lord, just keep them safe. Thank you for the vaccine and thank you as it rolls out to more and more people. And Lord, we pray your blessing on that. May it uh, help the situation that we're in and very quickly can, that we might be able to re return to normal. Thank you, Lord. We, uh, we give you praise. We give you glory. Continue to be with our nation. Help us in these difficult days and, and the, the division. Bring healing to, to the division. We're not always going to agree, but, but Lord, you can help us come to a place where we can uh, uh, disagree agreeably and we can find balance. We can find uh, love for each other. Lord, just help us to find unity. In some way and somehow, Lord, we, we our nation is built on that, uh, uh, that ability from the very beginning. And so, Lord, help us to, to find, find your path. Draw our leaders to you. Help them to seek your face above all. And uh, you know, we'll go from there. Once we seek your face, as the devotional has taught us today, seek your face first. Seek first his kingdom and all, all, everything else will come along after that. Lord, all that we need. Uh, thank you, Lord, for what we trust you're going to do. Help us this day and in the days ahead, but help us win this day. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching today. We'll be back tomorrow with uh, the next part of this, uh, this devotional, Win the Day. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.